we've actually got something that we're trying to try and sell out of this shed. <laughs> well, but that's a good start, I guess. Weather stick says it's going to be a real nice day. Snow pile's about gone. First thing this morning, I got to load that trailer up. Dad and I are going to take a load of small square bales and eight round bales to the hay auction. We're going to get that done before everybody else shows up there. <laughs> Some of you have asked what I use for a camera. Uh, right now I'm using the GoPro Hero 9. GoPros work for me. They're tough and compact, which is good because they get abused when they're with me. I just simply have one of these foam covers on the outside of it. I think the sound's good and it actually protects the wind. I know that farm YouTubers are constantly talking about what camera gear they use. This has really worked simple for me. I think the audio is okay. It protects the wind dec decently. And I don't have any freezing, lagging, or anything else like that that people seem to have with the GoPros. That's what I use. A keep it simple, stupid setup. Okay, new phone. Got to figure this one out. Hey, I'm just leaving my shop with the Dodge to go load up. So I'm just kind of giving you your heads up. Ice is coming off the lake. But one of my goals for today is to actually bring you guys a video that you've requested which is to get my dad to tell a story on how he actually got into farming. Because you might not know this, but my dad is actually a bona fide, genuine, first generation farmer. And some of you have asked of how the heck did he do that? How did he make it as a first generation farmer? I don't know if I've stated this on the channel yet or not, but when I go to load these inline trailers since you shove them from the back, I like to jackknife the truck, then it's pushing against the corner, not the corner, the the axle of the truck instead of actually pushing against the transmission. A little bit safer that way. One. Bandit shrank. Southern Iowa Ubers here. So you going with us? No. Okay. This, however, has not been my best looking load of hay. It's not bad. It's just not great. Remember that winter project I wanted to do? to go. Do you think that horse saw my trailer load of hay and went, oh look, a gas station.
we better not pass the diesel pump. You smell like horses. You smell exactly like a horse barn. Here's a stinky dog now. I'm gonna drop you off with Wayne. So on March 3rd, diesel fuel of my 24 hour MFA is 279.9, so basically 280. We went 261 miles, 261.2 divided by 29.42 gallons, 8.87, 31 and a half cents per mile, which I feel like I got better mileage since I was hauling small square bales. I don't know. Gotta go up, up. Does it have a hole in the end of it, or is it like that? This will be in the next video for you guys. So we've actually got something that we're trying to try and sell out of this shed. So my dad is considering selling uh, our soil finisher here. It's a sunflower soil finisher. What's the model on it? It's, I believe it's a 6433. 33 foot. Do you know the year of it? No. Don't know the year of it. How long have you owned it? Uh, around eight years. It hasn't been used in three years, three years or so because we bought a uh, Landol and the Landol's been doing the work. Really good tool, um, heavy. 643233. Hydraulic disc gangs on the front. Has some rolling baskets behind the disc gangs here. I don't know what size sweeps we got on there. What, nine inch sweeps probably? Yeah. Nine inch sweeps. Most of them are in excellent shape. Replaced a lot of them. I think they're about, most of them are been replaced actually. Four, five. Yep, a five bar harrow on the back. It does have a hitch on the back end of it. So if you were to pull like a, a rolling basket or something behind this even, tires are good on it. Hydraulic uh, depth control, good machine. We used to pull it with the 8630. So we pulled it with an 8630 with the Kinsey in it, which you guys have seen. We're selling it. You know how much you want for it? 20,000. My email's down in the description. So YouTube requests more words of wisdom from my father in the 2021 season. It was better than the 2020. <laughs> more your input on what we're doing type of thing. <laughs> 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 well, but that's a good start, I guess. And they've asked like the, what your story, how'd you get into uh, farming? I always wanted to farm. He's first generation, well, his grandpa farmed. And then it skipped a generation to you. Yeah. His, this operation is completely started by him. No family farm that he took over or anything like that, correct? Yeah. You worked a little bit on farms as a kid. Oh yeah, I worked quite a bit making hay and then driving tractors and heroin and stuff like that up till I was 18, 19 years old. And then you went to school at Indian Hills in Ottawa? Mm -hmm. For electronics. For electronics. And worked at US Cellular? Yeah, for 18 years. What was your title at US Cellular? Oh, multiple different ones. Network field engineer, project manager. Yeah, I was born in Davenport, and we lived in Bluegrass at that time. Yep. And then, what, then my dad ended up, like he said, he wanted to farm for a long time so he bought his first farm what year did you buy your first farm 1991 you bought it before i was born yep shortly i bought it in november you were born in january okay so 29 years ago yep. 29 years ago and that farm was in scott county yeah um how it wasn't that big of like 80 acres or so uh, more, more 48 than that. Four, it was 
It was only 48 acres? 48 acres. I remember it being bigger than that. And you farmed that for how many years? Well, initially when I bought it, I just kept renting it. So I didn't farm it the first year I bought it. Oh, you rented it out to somebody to farm it? Yeah. Okay. James Schwartz. That was like, so um, I rented it to him for two or three years after I bought it. Three or four years, maybe. And then when I started, I started farming in 1998. So uh, it was more than that. So 1998. So I was, was six. Place. Yep, you were six the first year I started farming. And I kind of remember that, and that's about when you built that. There was a building there, too, that you built, too. Yeah, probably along that time frame. And if the guy ever, person that owns that now ever wonders why there's so many bent ring-shaped nails all over the place, it was probably because of me. That'd be James Schwartz. <laughs> the same guy I rented it, too. Yeah, there's a bunch of bent <laughs> ring-shaped nails. I was a definite good helper building that building. So... You farmed that, and then we ended up down here. You well, bought. I bought us the second farm. I bought was in Van Buren County. Yeah, in Kiyosakwa. Yeah. So. Yeah. And then I farmed both in Kiyosakwa and up there. How'd you get a whole? How'd you move get to the Kiyosakwa farm? Just because of the travels with U.S. Cellular or something? <sighs> I would guess that was it, that that farm was up for sale and I knew about it, so. How many acres was over there? That was quite a bit. Yeah, that was 217. 217 acres yeah. of deer country. Yeah, most deer of Deer country farm. Yeah, most of it was in CRP, but what we were farming the deer ate 25 to 35% of it. Yeah, it was right there off of highway too. Yeah. Highway two and what's the other one? Uh, highway two and one, right at the intersection there. Yeah, I think there's a lumber mill there now or something. They used to have a restaurant. Yeah, restaurant used to be able to get big tenderloins at that restaurant. I yep. remember that. Yeah, and he's sold both of those farms since now. Then. Yep. The Scott County farm got sold probably like 2009 or so. Yeah, I don't know the dates. Somewhere in that neighborhood. So. And then the Van Buren County Farm, I don't remember when you... It was a few years later. Yeah. So, but during this time, he purchased equipment, nothing too fancy or anything like that. No. You actually used to buy a lot of equipment from the... There used to be an auction in, every, Sheraton. in Sheraton every Memorial Day or something like that. Was or Labor Day or Memorial Day? Uh, the later one. The later one? Yeah. And then, so he would move the equipment from one place to the other, wouldn't you? Yep. And then at some point, he just started having pieces of equipment at certain places. Oh, I was still moving the tractor because yeah. I only had one tractor. Yeah, which was a 40, 40, 46, 40? 4630. 4630. Yeah. And uh, he had a Massey Ferguson combine, right? Yep. Yep, I remember the Massey Ferguson combine extremely light in the back end i just remember every time he'd back up the back end would about come up off the ground i remember that yeah because um, it had a six row head on it yeah they weren't really designed for <laughs> six row heads. or steep hills <laughs> so and then and then we got into this area through his uh when he worked through us cellular he had to do a lot of project management deals where the cell phone towers and he bid out the cell phone tower project sites and stuff like that with contractors correct correct and there's a contractor down here that told hit my dad that a piece of land was coming up for sale down around here yep and that was what year was that 1999 1999 and at the auction the land no sold correct correct and i wasn't at the auction and you weren't at the auction uh-uh but then he purchased the land shortly after that. Yeah, a few weeks later. But did you purchase the house? Did you own the house at all ever? Yeah, I did. Yep. And then you sold off the house? I did. Yep. The same day I bought the farm. The same day you bought the farm, you sold the house? Yep. Okay. I didn't know if you'd ever owned that house. Yeah, I did. So that was 1999. Yep. And then you were basically full-time at u.s cellular yeah and at that full -time time farming. I, at, at that time i was farming up in scott county 
Van Buren County and down here. With a full-time job. Yeah. And we moved to Cedar Rapids uh, at some point. I don't remember what year that was. Um, and Dad got a promotion, too. So then you became, what was you, like the territory manager for? A construction manager. Construction manager for what territory? Uh, Iowa and most of Iowa and a little bit of Wisconsin, I think. Um, so all over the place. And then in 2008, during the recession, my dad lost his job. And you were farming like 2,000 acres or something like, what did you say? Yep. 2,000 acres as a, and a full-time employee. So at that point, my dad became a full-time farmer. Yep. And I stayed up in, or the family stayed up in Cedar Rapids to finish out high school. And dad was living down here in a camper, uh, pretty much. Yep. Until we purchased the house, and I don't know when that was. That was 2014. 2014. So the year I graduated high uh, college. So dad's been farming full time since, or full time since 2008. Yep. And I graduated high school in 2010, went to college, and I've been working for my dad full time since 2014. Correct. And we're heading into the 2021 season, which is supposed to be better than 2020, right? It's about gotta be. <laughs> <laughs> but that's gonna do it for today's video, guys. I've actually gotta load up some more hay, if you believe it or not. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. If you have and you've made it this far, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button on the way out and always consider subscribing to the channel. We'll see you the next time. I'm like, oh, I don't think I'll be torching anything or burning holes in it today. Wrong.